to their, their Christian. There's a dead Christian inside of them. Because what God said they must do, they don't do it. But let me tell you something. Christianity is a living religion. Christianity can give you what you want. This woman came from a region that had dead religion and dead religion won't help you. But if you depend upon Jesus Christ, it will come true. She needed a solution that she had not been able to provide for herself. She was desperate and she saw Jesus as her only hope. How oh, many can identify this morning with this poor, anxious woman? How oh, many can identify this morning with this poor, anxious woman? Perhaps you are calling because you have a child that is out of control. Call and believe him. He can bring her child back into control. Perhaps you are at your wit's end of a situation in your life. You have tried and tried. It seems like there's nothing else you can do. But I invite you to come to him and believe him this morning. Because he can help. Perhaps you have exhausted every means at your disposal. And do not know what to turn to. Well, I said turn to Jesus now. Maybe what you need is salvation. You need to accept him now. Or maybe you need restoration and forgiveness. Yes, he's willing to restore you this morning. He's willing to restore you this morning. Regardless of what you face in your life today, the answer will be found in Jesus Christ this morning. He can move your mountains. He can meet your knees. Got any mountain you think you can't tunnel through? Jesus can go through. Jesus can take you through. Be you in any valley you think you can't come through. He'll be there with you and he will take you through. Take you through. Yes, you may need to be saved for sins to be forgiven. But I tell you to come. He will. Don't be afraid to call on him this morning. He invites you to come. Don't be afraid to call upon him this morning because he invites you to come. He invites you to come. You do not have to bear that burden alone because he's there waiting to help you, wanting to help you, willing to help you. So come to him. So she had a petition. Just like all of us here this morning, we have great needs, but we need to go to him and we need to cry out to him. But secondly, I want to look at the woman persistence. And this is in verse 23 through 27. This woman comes to Jesus for help. And when she doesn't get the response, she imagines she stayed with Jesus until she gets what she wants. The woman came to Jesus and she asked Jesus for help. And she did not get the response that she wanted. But guess what? She never left him alone. Oh my God. Somebody just need to be patient with God this morning. Somebody just need to wait on him this morning. This woman decides that we're not going to know who at all. If there's help anywhere, it's right here. He is the only one who can help me. So no matter what him do, no matter what others do, I am going to stay right here until me get my blessing. I don't know about you, but me don't have nowhere to go with from my God. If he can't help me, nobody else can help me. I'm going to stay with my God. But within our persistence, I want you to recognize a couple of things. One, the obstacles of faith. Faith has many, many obstacles. To see that her need was met and her daughter was healed, this woman had to overcome many obstacles. It seems that she met resistance to her request at every turn. You have a problem yet at every turn you turn. Nothing now work out. Every, every way you go, it seems like a block, roadblock for you. Well, this is what seemed to happen to this woman. Every turn to turn, there was some obstacle, some blockage in her way. Yet, she persisted until she 
receive the goal that she wanted. Let's examine the obstacles that she faced. First of all, she had to overcome race. And that is in verse 21. It tells us that this woman was from Tyre and Sidon. And verse 22 had that she was a Canaanite. Um, this tells us two things about the woman. First, it tells us that she was descendant from a cursed set of people. She was the descendant of a cursed set of people. When Joshua and the people of Israel um, entered Canaan, they had been commanded to destroy the Canaanites completely. So she was from a race that was condemned. Secondly, she was from a region known for vile religious practices. She had a race problem. She wasn't an Israelite. So she had a race problem. Secondly, she had to overcome religion. She had to overcome religion. Follow me now. She came to Jesus and called out to him and she said, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. Thou son of David. Here she was a Gentile woman crying out to a Jewish Messiah. Do you get a picture? Of religion that she had to overcome. She was a Gentile. But yet she was calling out to a Jewish Messiah. She was a Gentile and guess what? Jesus gave her the response that she deserved. What response did she reserve? He answered her not a word. Because we do not talk to Gentiles at all. My God, what an obstacle. You come to the one man who you think should help you. Who have the help. How you ask him and he answer you. Have you ever been in a situation like that yet before? We have got to somebody, we have to beg somebody something and they don't answer you. How you feel? You feel goody eh? that they don't answer you. Remember, we have sending the little pit note and say, Tell him that me not there. <laughs> and the child goes and say, Guess what? Mama says she's not here. <laughs> and you make you feel worse. <laughs> So just answer not a word because she was a Gentile. Then she had to overcome racism now. When the disciples see or when the disciples saw and heard this Gentile calling out to their Messiah. You don't understand this now. When the Messiah, when the disciples saw this Gentile woman who no have no right, this Gentile woman come now to call out to their Messiah. Their Messiah. They reacted by telling Jesus to send her away. Send her away. They wanted nothing to do with her. She was not one of their people. So get out of here. In their eyes, she was different and that was enough to justify them not caring about her. Racism. You're not put away, so get out of here. What are we talking about? We're talking about the woman's fate. We're talking about persistence that the woman have. And we're talking about the obstacles that she had to go through with the fate that she have. You've got these same problems too. That when you want to believe and get some things done, there are obstacles in the way. But this woman have a great many of them. She had to overcome rejection. Verse 23 to 26. Jesus speaks to this woman. His words appears to be harsh in her ears. They were hard words when we listened to them. His words must have shaken her to the very core of her being. 
his words probably broke her heart further. First, he simple ignores her. It is as if he turns an indifferent ear to her cries for help. Then he tells her that his whole purpose in coming into this world was to reach the lost sheep of Israel. In other words, let me tell you something. I didn't come for you Gentiles. I came for the lost sheep of Israel. That is what Jesus Christ tells the woman. When she persisted still, I wouldn't stop. Jesus tells her that she's a dog. And she doesn't deserve no help. Come on, man. You can't tell me that, Lord. Aren't you the loving Savior? Aren't you the merciful God? If you tell me, say, me a dog, I'm going to deserve it. Maybe that's going to be hard now. Me a dog. He said, does not deserve the children's bread. The disciples rejected her. And now it appears that Jesus himself is rejecting her. Obstacles in her pathway. Then she had to overcome the reality that stands there. The reality of this situation is harsh. Her daughter is possessed with a devil that not easy to reconcile with. In other words, it might be that a situation where, guess what, me have cancer me, is a reality, you know? I know something me I think about is a reality. All it tests shows that me have this disease inside of me. It's a reality. What do I do? That the realities of what you are going through can be a stumbling block, an obstacle in the way of faith. She was a member of a doom race. These religious men did not even seem to care about her. So why should she? Why should she? Some of you, you're probably looking at some of the same barriers that are before you. You might be a lost person and you need Jesus. But you feel like you have no right to him. I'm telling you that no matter who you are, you can still come to Jesus. Gentile or no Gentile, nigger who no nigger, whoever you are, you can come to Jesus because he's for every one of us. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you have done. I don't care how wicked you have been. I the same Jesus is for you. The same one for all the religious people is the same one for you so you can come to him. You might have discovered that religion will work. Because let me tell you something, religion will work, you know. A Jesus Christ work. Religion will work. So if a fear temple you belong to a sense of God, that no simple no work. You better belong to Jesus. Because at Jesus' work, the faith cannot be in the institution here. The faith has got to be in Jesus. You have experienced the rejection of religious people all around you. All when everybody around you start to reject you. There comes a time when you look out for a brother who is a Christian and you want some help, but them reject you too. But guess what? A Jesus you have to look to. And no matter what obstacle there might be, it makes no difference. Yet, you still want a change. And you must depend upon Jesus Christ. If you do, he will not turn your way. His word said, he that cometh unto me, I was in no wise cast out. Others have been praying and seeking God about a matter that have troubled their hearts time and time again. You have cried out to him and asked him to do, to do this or to do that in your life and there seems to be no answer. No, have you ever cried to God yet and still like God no answer you at all? 
You feel like giving up? Let me encourage you today that God's silence is not an indication of God's unwillingness to meet your need. Did you get that? Let me say it one more time. God's silence is not an indication of God's unwillingness to meet your need. Even if you don't think that he has answered you, it don't mean that he is unwilling to answer your need. God's silence serves to test our feet and to remind us that he operates on a different schedule than we do. A silence operates in a way to tell us, listen, God no operate by your time. God has his own time frame, but his own time frame is just the best one. So when it seems like he's silent, don't think that he's unwilling, he's going to come true on his time. His silence was not unconcerned. He was testing her faith. As was sometimes his method of doing things. Remember one day what he did? He took some mud and put it upon a man's eye and tell him and say, I must walk all the way to Silo Siloam and wash him high. But, but you know, God, why me must walk with mud on my eye? Where about look for me going on the road all the way with mud on my eye and the people out on one side trying to reach pool when all you have to do is say the word? He could have said the word. He didn't have to say, he didn't have to put the mud on the man. I am at the man walk all the way up on the road, going all the way down. Just say the word. But if, according to Jesus, if I said the word, you might not believe. If I said the word, your faith might not be strong. So let me see if you have any faith now. You walk down the road or so. With the mud on your high too. And if I just have that faith to overcome that obstacle, if I would just walk with a mother on the high because I'm instructed by God, when I reach Siloam, when I wash me high, I'm going to see. It's going to come true. It's going to come true. Jesus could have said the word, but he was testing his faith. The Lord sometimes delays his answer to our prayers only to put a test to us in order to try to establish our faith. It was so with Mary and Martha. Jesus, your friend is sick. Come quick. Come on my time and heal. But the Bible said Jesus not going to know it at all. And keep on doing a whole little business in a whole little time. Until after four days time. But guess what? He will come true. That's the point, you know. It seemed like he's silent now. He did, she, he did not answer the woman. And she felt that silence was meaning. She, she realized that she was. Well, she didn't give up at all. But some people, because of the silence, they don't they want to go away. But no. He stayed four days. But nonetheless, when he came, the blessing came. And it was healed. Yeah. What obstacles are facing you today. Look at it today. What are the obstacles in your life that is preventing you from believing God and getting your blessing? Persist in seeking the Lord until his time, God's time, come true. Because when his time come true, he will remove the barrier and he will give you the victory. You see, understand this. Your faith will not be defined by what you receive from God. Your faith will not be defined by what you receive from God, but by what it takes to stop you from getting to God. Your faith is going to be defined by what it takes to stop you from getting to God. Because when the obstacles in your way, if you can step over this one, and step over that one and reach down there to where the goal is. Guess what? You will realize that your faith will give you the victory. That's how your faith is going to be defined. 
Not simply because of what God gives you, but what you think you can get over, what will stop you in the way. So there are obstacles. But there's also faith as some opportunities. Opportunities of faith. As Jesus speaks with this woman, he never slams the door in her face. You realize that? Even though he didn't answer and the words that she spoke to her, he did not slam the door in her face. In Mark's account of this encounter, Mark records Jesus Christ as saying, let the children first be filled. Let the children first be filled. The word first was what this broken hearted woman needed to hear. This is what she needed to hear from Jesus. Jesus did not say, you cannot have what you have asked me for. He simply says, thy children must be served first. He said, I have come to the children of Israel and they must be filled first. You know what happened? She took that word to mean that if there is a first, then there is a second. So hope is not gone yet. When Jesus Christ said, I come to the children of Israel, I come to them first, it don't mean that you're not there too, you know. Don't mean that there too. It means that there is second. And if there is some second there, give me the second line. I, I, loved, I, I used to love this song that we used to sing in church every, 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 every Sunday night when we used to have evangelical service in, in church every Sunday night. And you know, people keep on telling that I can't sing. So, because that they're encouraging me to sing, you know. I don't know why they want to put me up on the side, but it is no secret what God can do, what is done for others, he'll do for you. With arms wide open, he'll pardon you. Amen. The word is long this morning, okay? Long this morning. You see, these obstacles that were thrown up by the Lord Jesus were not placed there to discourage or to defeat this lady. The obstacles were placed there to mature our faith. So, bear with me again now and just watch the progression of how the Lord is building our faith. In verse 32, she calls on Jesus based on his role as the Jewish Messiah. Jesus, she receives no help. She has no right to approach him on that ground. She was not a Jew, so you cannot approach the Jewish Messiah. That was the first step. The second way Jesus Christ tried to build her faith was in verse 24 and 25. She hears Jesus tell her that his mission here on earth is to the nation of Israel. And when she heard this, she moves beyond seeing him as a Jewish Messiah. She moves beyond seeing him just as a Jewish Messiah. She now sees him as her only hope. And therefore verse 24 says, she sees him as being worthy of worship. And in verse 34, she bowed down to him, humbled herself at her feet, give him the worship he deserved, and appeals for help, and then get help. I wish I had time to get this clear to you. In other words, the first approach was to a Jewish Messiah, but me a Gentile, so I had no right to it. So I'm not right to it then. All right, me now worry about the message part of it now. Me the Lord part of it now. Because you are my Lord and you can help me. Make me bow down and worship you and see if help won't come. 
<laughs> oh God, this word, this word, this word. Mm. But the third part, progress with me. Third part. Now she hears Jesus compare her to a dog. The Jews look at non-Jewish people as dogs. The word that they use, the Jews use now, follow me clearly, the word that the Jews use refers to a mangy dog. Not just an ordinary dog, a mangy dog. It is used as a metaphor of people who are unclean, they are filthy, and they are dirty. They are filthy, and they are dirty. Jesus, as a matter of fact, used that same word that the Jews used when he did speak in Matthew, I think it was, when he said, uh, what is holy, don't give it to dog. And don't chew um, pearls before swine. So Jesus Christ used that word before. But the word that Jesus Christ used to this woman about dog was a different word. These words mean little puppies. It refers not to mangy dog, to dirty dog, but it refers to a dog that is a pet in the house. A family member, if you wish. In just using a different word, Jesus gave her a hint. And the woman picked up the hint so quickly. And I get the feeling that Jesus Christ must have twinkled in his eyes, must have smiled a bit when the woman picked up exactly what she was talking about and he catched the meaning. So the woman gave Jesus Christ one of the wisest answers that anyone could give apart from Jesus. Hear the woman now. Yes. It isn't right to take the food from a children's table. I give it to the dog in a right. But even the dogs, the little puppies in the house, are often treated to a morsel from the table. All I'm asking you for is a crumb. Hey. She wasn't asking for everything. Just for a dog's portion. <laughs> Anybody want a dog portion this morning? Oh God. Give me if I get the dog portion from God, I am all right. It is a dark portion from God that was going to heal the, the, the hook, the girl, the mad girl. In my need, God, if you just give me a dark portion out of your hand, I'm going to be all right. But guess what? The woman pick it up right away, though. The woman pick up the God, Jesus Christ, and they call her. No, not the man's the dog. Jesus Christ simply put her like a little law and said, Listen, you are a puppy in the house. But guess what? How many people are in puppy in a family? You know how much people left them with millions of dollars in the dog? And then cat? Give me some time, God. Please. St st stand still, time. Stand still. Stand still. But do you recognize? Do you recognize now? That at the Lord's table, that you are children, you are children of God, then tell me something. If a dog's portion can do that much, what about you who can sit at the table as children of God? What portion can you get? Uh, I wish this morning that somebody's faith could be built this morning. I wish this morning that somebody could believe God. That guess what? I am not going to get the dog's portion. Although the dog's portion is enough. But I'm, I'm, I'm a child of God. And I'm sitting at the table. So my portion is right there for me. Oh God almighty. Mm. 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 <sighs> Can you see? Oh, Jesus took this woman on her small feet and led her all the way until her faith was grown up. The obstacles of faith 
almost always turn out to be opportunities in disguise. There are some obstacles right now that are in your way to believe in. But guess what? Most time, those obstacles turn into opportunity. Oh, God Almighty. <laughs> Sometimes I never throw some obstacle away. No. And if I hear that, if I realize I've been thrown that obstacle away, that very obstacle is what God is going to use and bless you. Mm. All right. Obligation of faith. Obligation. You know a lot of people would have given up by now. Jesus ignored her. Disciples played a race card against her. Jesus even compared her to dog. Yet she persists. And most people would have thrown in their hands in frustration and given up by now. Uh, some of them would have stormed out of the house and they would have said, I don't need this. So much of your God of love for your message of compassion and your narrow bigot religion. I don't want anything to do with your God or with religion. That is the way that many people act today. They come to church and they want a quick fix. And when they don't get a quick fix, they run out. Mm -hmm. They come, you know. But when they don't get a quick fix, they run back out. Some people only come for the bread and fish. And the moment the bread and fish is share out quick, them gone also. <laughs> but you got to have faith, man. Mm. You got to stay with God. You've got to believe God that even if fish and bread don't come right away, even if you get a quick fix right away, Jesus is there. And no matter how great the problem is, he's going to come through. Wait, I say. I say, wait on the Lord. Be patient because he's coming through for you. If you only believe, he's coming through for you. He's coming through for you. She persisted in spite of where can I stop, Lord? All right. Two more minutes and I stop, Lord. So I will, I'll only cover two points this morning. Mm. She persisted in spite of everything that was thrown in her pathway. When you come into God, no matter nothing stop you. Mm. When you have a problem, no matter no no roadblock stop you. Jump over roadblock. Come on, man. No, nobody stop you. Jump over people. <laughs> no look for nobody face. <laughs> no take time. No take time talk. Ball out. Are you got need? And not them got a need. Are you got a need? Blind back to the muscle. So Jesus, the son of David, heal me. And the people say, Keep quiet, blah blah blah, Timus. And they say, Guess what? I know who no blind, I'm me blind. Jesus, the Bible says, Ball out louder because I hear what I need. I know nobody else has it. And you got the problem, you press through. No man, nothing to you from come to God. Oh God, a crumb might have been all that she could get. But she knew that a crumb from the hand of Jesus would be more than enough. Do you know that? Just like a crumbs from the hand of God is going to be more than enough. More than enough. More than enough. You know, amen. Amen. I can tell that was two thirds of what I had to say, but time won't permit us. But you've got enough. Just believe God. No, nobody stop no way. 
No make no circumstances stand before you. Just believe him. Faith believing. Once you believe, he'll come true. If it's only a crumbs, make it fall from the table. And you pick it up because it come from God, it's going to be enough. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us stand. Just lift your hands in worship to the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Here was a woman that was determined to continue to face her obstacles because she knew what she wanted. Being embarrassed. In other words, being ashamed, being shamed. Obstacle of embarrassment, but she persisted. Obstacle of racism and bigotry that appeared, but she continued. Rejection by the disciples, but she continued because she knew what she wanted. And she was determined. That's only one individual that could give it was the Lord Jesus Christ. And so she bowed, recognized and confessed him as Lord. But she was willing to take the crumbs, that which fell from the table would have been sufficient. Preacher said, we are the children this morning so we can claim the bread. So lift your hands before the Lord, everybody. Claim the bread because you're a child. It is for you. And I trust this morning that by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you receive the word. That somebody came here this morning struggling. Somebody came here facing all the barriers, all the obstacles, all the difficulties. Somebody came this morning discouraged. But here's the word to you that you're a child of God. Hallelujah. You're a child of God. No, you're sons and daughters. For as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. And if children be heirs and joined heirs with Christ, that is your position. So receive that the Lord that belong to the children this morning. Begin to confess. Hallelujah. That the inheritance of the Lord belongs to you. That the blessings of the Lord belongs to you. That peace, healing belongs to you. The graces of God belongs to you. Receive.